The year was 1968, and my family was living in Hollywood, California. This was a time when nobody locked their doors at night, and your children could play safely outside until the streetlights came on. I was very small for my age, and the youngest of six kids. This occurred a few weeks before my fifth birthday. It was a normal day, kids were playing outside, and some of my siblings were riding their bikes and playing in the courtyard. Well, I wanted to ride on the back of my brother's bike, but he was playing with my sister Melanie. I remember hopping up and down on the sidewalk, bugging my older siblings to give me a ride. So my sister Rachel gave in. I think she was just tired of hearing me beg, honestly. Now our mother told us to never ride our bikes without wearing shoes. But I think sometimes because Rachel was so hard-headed that she never gave thought to those rules. She didn't think they applied to her. So she picked me up and put me on the back of her bike with a banana seat and told me to hold on to the sissy bar. Well, the moment I sat down, I realized that she didn't have pegs for my feet, so I got scared. I'm scared, I changed my mind, I told her. I remember saying it over and over, but at that point, she was already determined to take me for a ride. She told me to be fine, just hold my feet out wide. Well, Rachel had a tendency to sway every time she pumped the pedal, and my little legs were teetering back and forth until, whoosh, my foot went into the bicycle spoke and cut off one of my toes blood was everywhere and I started screaming so she grabbed me up and ran with blood streaming right past my older siblings and right into the apartment oh the look on my mother's face and my oldest sister's face they were hysterical so my other sister charity wrapped my foot with a towel and ran carrying me outside where we all piled into the station wagon leaving my brother and Melanie at home the ride to the hospital was scary mom was screaming and honking the horn and my eldest sister was talking a mile a minute while holding my foot above my head. And Charity was stroking my face and wiping my tears, cupping my face so I didn't see how badly I was really hurt. I think I was in shock because it really didn't hurt as much as it should have until it started to throb in the car. Man, we must have been a sight. A crazy woman trying to get help with her kids all covered in blood and my foot in the air. Needless to say, they took us right in. Going through the corridors of the hospital, I can still remember smelling rubbing alcohol and the mercurochrome. They rushed me into a room with a metal table and right away I was frightened. They unwrapped the towel from my foot and for the first time, I saw the mangled mess that was once my toe, blackened by the grease from the chain on the bike. Mama kept assuring me that everything was gonna be okay, but the look on her face told me differently. The doctor asked if she had the rest of my toe, so she called home and asked my brother and sister to go find it. Now this is actually the funny part. My brother and sister walked down the street to where all this happened. They were looking up and down the sidewalk and street when an old lady who was sitting on the porch asked them what they were doing. My brother told her he was looking for his little sister's toe so the doctor could sew it back on. The old lady told him she saw the toe and put it in a baggie and threw it in a big dumpster. If he wanted it, he'd have to climb in and dig it out. So that's what he did. After he found it, he jumped out. My sister Melanie, who was standing there the whole time with her eyes bigger than saucers, went with him to the neighbor's apartment to ask his friend's mom for a ride to the hospital. The second she opened the door, she stepped back holding her nose because my brother smelled like trash. So she ended up putting a towel on her seat and gave them a ride. In the meantime, I'm still in the room and they're using these long needles to numb my foot and I'm crying my little eyes out. At one point, my mother had her eyes closed, so I asked what she was doing. As my voice skipped a breath, she told me to calm. Shh, she said. See white light around you. Envision God's white healing light all around you and stay calm, baby. I closed my eyes and tried my best, but now I was in a lot of pain. So I gripped the sheet and tried to be as brave as I could, but it wasn't working. My heart was going a mile a minute and with all that commotion in the room, I couldn't calm down. By now, the other half of my toe showed up and they started preparing me for surgery. I pleaded with my mother to stay with me, but of course the doctor said that she couldn't, so I started freaking out again. My mother felt helpless, so she held me one last time. While I was in her arms, I saw a bright white light over her shoulder. I remember that it was so bright, I squinted my eyes and tried to move her to the side so I could see what was going on. There I saw a man with long black hair and caramel colored skin in a long orange robe 
and a glow from his face. He was just standing there with this beautiful smile on his face. Standing next to him was what looked like this beautiful male angel, so bright that his light filled the entire room. That's the light that I had to squint from. I felt warmth come all over my body and a sense of peace calmed me down. I looked at my mother and told her that she could leave and not to worry. She looked confused, so I told her that my guardian angel was standing right there with another angel. Don't you see them? I remember asking her, but my mom and Charity said they couldn't see anything. She put my hand on her cheek and I told her not to cry because I wasn't scared anymore. They wheeled me into the operating room and gave me something that put me to sleep, telling me that I would wake up soon. I remember seeing the doctors and nurses all working around me with a big round light blocking out their faces, and I was hearing them talk. My body felt light, and I felt myself floating up over their heads, and I saw my little body lying there on that table. Looking over to the other side of the room, I noticed that man in the orange robe was extending his hand, and the angel smiled, giving off this calming vibration. I could hear the doctor talking to the nurse and he was telling her that his daughter was about the same age as I was and that he was very concerned because she was very sick and had an important operation that she'd have to have soon. I looked up at the angel's face and he nodded his head and smiled at me. It felt like only moments had passed when I was being pulled back into my body. I woke up seeing my mother's beautiful face smiling and her eyes full of tears. They told her that I'd have to have quite a few more operations before I could walk and that I might have a limp. They also said I was lucky that it wasn't my whole foot, being as small as I was. There weren't any regular rooms available at the time, so they ended up putting me in the pediatric burn ward. The room smelled weird, and it had to be kept cold. There were four other girls in there, some lying in these contraptions to hold them still. After my family left for the night, I felt really lonely, and I was scared because all the other girls were still in so much pain. I was little and I didn't understand what was going on. It was all really traumatic for me. It was time for bed and all the visitors were gone, so the nurses came in and helped all the other girls. The lights were dim and the TV was off. There were a few faint moans made by the other girls throughout the night, but all I could think about was how I was missing my mom. The night was long and I was so cold that I started to shiver and I quietly cried to myself, soaking my pillow with tears. But then, I felt that same warmth that I'd felt before. It was like another light was reaching out to me, and I could feel someone holding my hand. When all this came over me, I didn't feel like crying anymore, and my eyes became really heavy, and I fell asleep. The next morning, the nurses woke us up bright and early, and the hospital was busy once again. I remember laying there at one point, and one of the girls started calling to me, Hey you, little girl, over here. I tried to prop myself up to see who was calling me, but I didn't see anyone. And then she said, I saw you last night. Who was that by your bed? I realized it was the girl across from me. She was looking through a mirror because she couldn't move because of her burns. She moved her foot to indicate that it was her that was talking to me. And she asked me again who I was talking to the last night. So I told her that it was my angel. She said she wished she had an angel too, and I told her she does. She just can't see her. I think that made her feel better, and it's what I truly believed. My family came and went to visit, leaving me with my own blanket, and the next day I was finally able to go home. On the way out, I insisted on seeing the doctor who was sewing up my toe. I said that I had something very important to tell him right away. I guess the nurse thought it was cute, and she decided to humor me, so she called him on the intercom, and shortly later, he arrived. He asked what he could do for me, so I motioned for him to come down to the wheelchair with my finger, and I said I needed to tell him something in his ear. So when he bent down to my face, I whispered, thank you, and then I told him that his daughter would be just fine. I know it. I told him, I said, she won't be sick anymore, so don't worry. She has a guardian angel just like I did. Then I kissed him on his cheek. He stood up and stuttered, holding his mouth open. He didn't know what was going on, or how I knew about his daughter. But then he hugged my mom for a long time. My mother didn't know what to think either, so on the way home I told her all about my new friends in the burn ward 
and all the things that happened to me there with the angels. My mother wasn't surprised, though. She believes that everybody has an angel around you, protecting you. In this case, I got to see mine, and they were beautiful.